Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Здравствуйте, дамы и господа. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Меня зовут Степан Солженицын. My name is Stepan Solzhenitsyn. I uh, take care of uh, infrastructure, energy, and other projects at a company, McKinsey, it works all over the world. And today, all, all the cities, all the countries are gathered here in Moscow today. This event is called the briefing. We just introduced all the participants, but the most important event of this briefing will ask uh, Deputy Mayor of Moscow for Urban Policy and Construction, Marat Husnulin. We would like uh, Mr. Husnulin to give us an overview of what has been happening in Moscow in recent years, tell us about uh, the biggest projects that Moscow has implemented, including the housing renovation project. What have you achieved in these years? So give us a briefing over what you were able to accomplish. And also tell us about infrastructure. Housing, of course, develops hand in hand with the infrastructure. So what are the goals? Uh, for Moscow for the next few years. So let's put your slides on and I give the floor to Deputy Mayor of Moscow, Marat Husnulin. Good afternoon, colleagues, our visitors, uh, friends. We are very happy to welcome you here in this hall. This is uh, Urban Forum number eight. And uh, we worked very hard to finish this concert hall in time for the Urban Forum. Just four days ago, we had a thousand construction workers working here to finish this concert hall in time. We wanted you to enjoy this wonderful venue. We wanted you to be able to see what we were able to accomplish. This park and this hall demonstrate our approach to urban development. This year, we have a very interesting subject. We are looking at the way cities develop, agglomerations develop, metropolises develop. What role does man play in this process? Today we talk about uh, mega projects we have implemented in Moscow. And uh, we are always looking at the role that the man plays in these things. It's important for us to share our experience with you, but even more important is for us to listen to your ideas, your proposals, your comments, what you think we need to do in Moscow to make Moscow an even better city. Let's uh, take a look at history briefly. Let's go back to 2010 when we had a new team led by our mayor, Sergei Sebyanin. They set out on their journey managing the city. We had serious threats. We had traffic jams. Unfortunately, we were ranked number one in the world in traffic jams. We had a disbalanced situation in construction, and it was chaotic development. Companies were building new buildings wherever they pleased. This was a typical situation for the day, and as Mayor said in his a report today, this was a different period of time. Uh, the situation was different back then. And then the new team came in, and the situation changed. Our uh, system of roads was insufficient, and uh, we were ranked last among mega cities around the world in this respect. And even after we decided we need to build transport infrastructure, we didn't have capabilities to do so. So we understood that without trusting some drastic solutions in two or three years, we would face a total transport collapse by 2012, 2013. So from the very start, the mayor outlined a number of priorities, fighting traffic jams, beating traffic jams, and uh, make it inconvenient for people to move around the city. The next goal was to create new development uh, strategies, polycentrical structure of the city. Uh, we wanted to 
enable people to reach their working places uh, and uh, entertainment areas without cars. We started building multifunctional centers. Uh, we uh, introduced a new ruling where uh, ground level was only, could only be used for public uh, institutions, public places, not residential housing. Step by step, we improved and our urban forum year after year provided us with new ideas, new motivation for development. We talked to people, we listened to people's proposals, we had a large dialogue with our investors. Actually, I see many of our investors here in this room. We have over 25 companies in Moscow with over a, a million square meters in, of development projects in their portfolios. They listened to us, we listened to them, and we reviewed large number of investment projects. Um, doing our best to strike proper balance between the interests of the city authorities, uh, investors, and the people who live here. So we had a number of major programs. You can see those programs listed here on the screen. Of course, the biggest program was uh, metro construction. We had 298 kilometers of underground metro. So the mayor said, first, we need to increase its size by 30 percent and 50 percent. And today I can tell you that it is our plan to almost double our metro system. And this year we want to set a new record. 50 kilometers of new metro roads uh, gradually. We started working on railways as well. It was a difficult project, but it was a huge success when in 2016 we finished building the Moscow Circle uh, Road, Moscow Central Circle, 54 kilometers, 31 stations of a ground metro. And it exceeded its design capacity already. We started working closer together with the Russian railways, and today we want to renovate over 300 kilometers of railways. We'll renovate some old stations and build new ones. We will combine underground and overground metro systems and make it an integrated system. So our metro system will be one of the biggest in the world. We cannot compete with uh, Shanghai and Beijing, of course, because they have more people, they have a larger area, but uh, we would be similar to New York in this respect. You can see on the screen the number of kilometers. We never stopped, even, even for one day, the building transportation infrastructure. Uh, like streets, it's not so much about the roads. You can see on the screen that we are designing 1,000 kilometers of roads, 815 kilometers have been built. As of today, 227 artificial structures such as um, uh, bridges and tunnels and junctions have been built, which is 30 percent of all the pre-existing uh, junctions and bridges. But the main goal that we set for ourselves is developing public transportation. We are primarily developing dedicated lanes for public transportation, although I can say that when we compare ourselves to other megapolises of the world, even today in Moscow, 70 percent of population is using public transportation, which is the one of the highest uh, ratios of the world megapolises. But still, we want to improve the situation. Historically, we've had the density of the road network very, very low in Moscow, and we are actively building. We have approved a big project of the so-called three Lincoln ro roads, northwestern Lincoln Road. We've completed building it 84 kilometers. Then the north, uh, east, south, east, could you please put it up on a screen, and the south Rokada, and there'll be yet another transportation ring. We are also continuing to develop a uh, road network on the new 
territory. We have the central part of Moscow in uh, older borders. Now we have three major rings. Then the new, then the new uh, chain. It's uh, it's the square methodology. We are trying to build this uh, road of network. The very first train, first 20 kilometers. It was. Uh, it was the train with a good transportation network and then we are not planning to build this territory but to leave it as a recreation area for our megapolis and it would be quite logical if you do the transportation development you have to build the uh, interchange hubs it's the most difficult program because you have to put together many projects many contractors uh, you have to look into the interests of the populations you have to rebuild uh, some real estate venue because those uh, interchange hubs enables uh, people to move from one mode of transportation to another to save time and route and to develop territory around these hubs and within the walking distance. In addition to these major transportation projects, we're also involved in developing the Moscow River embankments. I have to say that about 60 kilometers are being designed and built, uh, 24 bridges. Now we are rebuilding uh, older part of embankments, building the new Moscow River embankments. And we believe that this is the territory that we have to give back to the city, give it back to people, because 70 percent of the Moscow River territory was closed, was inaccessible to people, either privately owned or was limited by some technical facilities and limitations. So all eight 86 kilometers um, as long as the Moscow River stretches. Uh, 201 kilometer would be the onshore line strip. We want to give it back to the Moscovites. And also, after we've mm, set all the goals and our capabilities for the mm, transportation network, we've returned to the renovation program in Moscow. Before that, we were doing a renovation program since 1999. It was completed uh, in the last year. And then we had a decision to make what to do. Shall we stop or should we launch a new program? It was a very tough and difficult decision that we have made. Well, the, the, the mayor reported to the president. We had a public hearings about that. Uh, the hearings were hard, and eventually we've decided not to fix the older housing stock, which is 60 years old, but to erase it. 5,171 house. Each house, each apartment block had a voting power, and then 5,000 buildings have made a decision. And the rule was that if two thirds of the residents are may, are voting, are voting for capital uh, repair or reconstruction, then we take this house. But if during this reconstruction, one third of the people in this house would make a decision that they disagree, at any time we will exclude this house from the reconstruction. It was a serious political decision which we have approved. And today I can assuredly say to you that the program has been running less than a year, but the very first uh, residents, the first uh, dozens of families have been resettled to new housing. And before the end of the year, we will begin resettling another 10,000 people. We've built 1 million square meters of the real estate. Another 3 million square meters are in design stage, and yet 2 more million. Uh, we will begin design and build in the next half a year. Having been involved in the program of renovation, we've never stopped in our program of social development. And I would like to say that uh, whenever Moscow residents would ask us to build uh, preschool, daycare centers, additional hospitals, any such application, well, the mayor would quickly mm, review at his uh, meetings, and eventually we would make decision wherever it's needed, we would build it. We've built several hundreds of facilities, as you can see it on the screen. And before 2023, in each district of the city, we know what we are going to build. In the last period, we have um, constructed big volume of real estate uh, since 2011 through 2018, almost 60 million square meters, which is 30% of all the total real estate uh, stock in Moscow. Every year we are placing a study in Coopers, compare ourselves against other cities, and I can say that by the 
rate of growth of mm, new real estate and by the rate of growth of transportation network to the existing ones, we are among the global leaders. We are updating our whole real estate stock, the residential, non-residential, and we're making a special emphasis on the jobs, creating new jobs. And I, I guess we're one of the few cities in the world where the number of real estate, commercial real estate, is, um, which is creating jobs, exactly exceeding the amount of real estate. We are trying to be balanced in our construction plans so that um, people would find it most comfortable to live and work in the same place without the need to commute. One of the major projects is the new Moscow, Greater Moscow. When we first devised this project, we thought that it will be the new growing point where we will 1.5 million people um, working and 1 million people leaving. When we first conceived this pro project, we studied international experience, Greater Paris experience. Uh, back then, we uh, studied the larger Paris program. We've learned a lot thanks to our colleagues from France. And uh, the, we have a long-standing friendship, and this is why they, world, they won the World Cup. And uh, let's give them a round of applause. They are, they are worthy. And we are very proactive about this project, and in six years, we were able to um, uh, create 200,000 new jobs. We believe it's the biggest achievements you can see on the screen of how we are continuing to build a street road network, and we do not have any doubts that these uh, plans were even exceeding, uh, getting ahead of ourselves in implementing these plans. One strong driver was the World Cup, definitely. And today, one co some correspondents were asking me, what will be happening with all this infrastructure built for the World Cup? And my answer is, all that has been built in Moscow, no one is going to take it away. It's going to stay in the city for the um, uh, Moscovites, for the guests of the cities. And um, three metro stations that we have built uh, for all the stadiums, they will be working for the city. We've built not only uh, stadiums, we've built uh, sport clusters. Today, Luzhniki Stadium is not only the main arena um, for Mundial. It's 220 square meters of the facilities and venues, um, the observation ground, sporting facilities, in 160 hectares of the land, which is improved land, and uh, 44 more sporting facilities are located, part of them, of the international level, aquatic sports center, uh, rhythmic gymnastics sports center. We believe that Luzhniki complex will uh, host about 45 million people every year as a legacy after the World Cup. The same is happening with the Spartak Stadium. It's also a sporting cluster. By the end of the year, we will deliver Dynamo Stadium, which is another uh, sporting cluster. And most importantly, that for the children we've built we have built 11 youth sport centers and training fields where young guys uh, have looked at how our team is uh, playing, hoping that they will also become the world champion, champion, uh, champions of the world. It's also the health of the nation, and I believe that these investments will pay back for themselves, not even to mention hotels, and we have a huge influx of the tourists in our city, and we do hope that we will continue uh, expanding this uh, business line of tourism. We're also heavily involved in the projects of uh, medicine on top of uh, building a lot of medical facilities, outpatient hospitals and inpatient hospitals. We're upgrading many of them for the first time. According to the special federal um, legislation, we have launched into operation international medical cluster in Skolkovo, which means any world-class companies, medical companies, they can come and work with their for, for their projects in, in Moscow. Another mega project is creating comfortable zones. We are building parks and every year, we are building and uh, renovating about dozens of different parks, dozens. We're building pedestrian areas, bike lanes. We are creating mm, an environment so that the city would be as comfortable as it can be uh, for, uh, for the city people. And uh, we've done a special research, and we've realized that the overwhelming majority of people living in Moscow, they do support our urban policies. Of course, no one wants 
to be raised and removed. No one likes it when the road is built next to your house. But when it will be completed, when the streets will be landscaped and expanded, when it all becomes uh, nice and finished, then eventually uh, Moscovites say thank you to us for that. And um, we we are hoping that, um, having been here and looked, you will share what you liked and mostly what um, are your corrections, because we will try to take into account uh, all of your feedback. And this is why we're here at this forum today, to share our experience uh, and share our impressions. Thanks a lot for your attention. Uh, thank you very much for this very short but very dynamic, I would say inspiring um, speech. If I may, just one conversation. It's a little bit provocative, I would like to warn you. You gave us so many great details about this new sport infrastructure. What if someone would ask you and say, it's time now, it's time to get ready that in about 14 years you have to do the Summer Olympic Games. Do you think the Moscow would be able to pull it off after the World Cup? You can scare us by anything. We are ready. We can do any Olympic Games. No sweat. No problem. If I may, if I may, I would like to change my plan. Uh, ask Maurice Lewa. Um, because first of all, we have congratulated you, and then uh, the Paris will host Olympic Games. But the comparison was very interesting. The comparison of what Moscow is doing and what the Greater Paris is doing. How would you evaluate, uh, you know, what compared to Big Paris, what Moscow was succe successful in doing and what Moscow is still yet to do compared to Big Paris? Thank you. First of all, I would like to uh, welcome all the uh, all those who are here. It's my pleasure to see you all because since our first meeting in 2011, I've been away only once. At all other meetings of our Urban Forum, I've been here with you, and I can say from my based on my own impressions, I can assuredly say that Moscow has changed drastically. I can say it on behalf of the French delegation and I can assert it on behalf of other delegations. And for me personally, I would like to congratulate my dear friends and my colleague Marat Husnulin and Sergei Semyonovich Sabyanin and all of Russia with a grand success on organizing and hosting the World Cup. Dear friends, I as the world champion, I attribute myself to world champions, I can say that you are attaining incredible success in uh, sporting infrastructure and you have convinced and, should I say, surprised us even to a point. And from my whole heart, I would like to say that Marat Husnulin has become my friend since the first time we had met back in 2010 when we've had a meeting with Sergei Sabyanin, we could um, share our opinion and views about the project of Greater Paris, which was the personification implementation of the vision of the mayor of Paris and the president of France of what Paris had to be by 2030 and the whole Paris agglomeration. And I have to say that these projects uh, have a lot in common. That is Greater Moscow and Greater Paris, because the Moscow agglomeration, and you know it very well, it's not up to me to say it to you, but Mm, it's one third of the um, GDP, uh, gross domestic product. There will not be the growth of the GDP unless the Moscow is going to grow. The same is true for France. Paris is one third, 30 percent of the France's uh, GDP. And um, one thing cannot grow without the other. Also, Marat Shakirzanovich was speaking to us about successes in the field of transportation. They are impressive. And I also would like to draw a parallel with the, uh, with the country of, of France, because back in time we had also been developing the project of metro in Greater Paris. And now I have to admit, 
that while in the Greater Paris as a part of this project, we have uh, succeeded in inspiring other projects such as the Moscow project. I want to say that this time the Greater Moscow project has gone beyond the scope of what we've done in Greater Paris. Uh, you've uh, surpassed us because Marat Husnulin now has been speaking about 60 new stations of the subway, and another 20 will be open, as far as I understand. But we're speaking not only about the stations, we're speaking about the road infrastructure, among other things. And in the same way, we have been opening new stations. By the way, Marat, you are welcome to the grand opening ceremony. It's very impressive uh, to be as a witness of all these changes uh, which are happening in Moscow. I'm quite impressed and impressed that the projects do not stop. They, they keep expanding, developing under the wise guidance of Sergei Sabyanin and Marat Husnulin. And uh, I also would like to say briefly about the renovation program. In France, we are facing exactly the same problems. Since the end of the Second World War, we had to deal with um, many issues. It's very difficult to change um, our districts and neighborhoods. The point is that even if your building is old and obsolete and you're thinking about how to uh, build a new building, you have to um, keep in mind the best interests of people. It should be human-centric. Uh, it should be in the heart of your reasoning, thinking, and planning. We have to base everything on the humanistic approach. One thing that have to be understood by all of us. Those men and women and children who are living in these apartment buildings is not just a population of one you know, vague country. These are the people thanks to which we live. And their houses, it's their lives. They're building their happiness in this um, housing. When we resettle people from the older housing, they, they sh should, have been, should have been happy. But we've seen tears on their eyes because they were living the places where they've spent so many happy moments of their lives. So it is not always so easy to do these kind of projects. It's not the point that you're spending millions and billions in any currency, but we are speaking about um, live humans. You are working with people. And uh, when it comes to uh, urbanism, you always have to draw parallels with being human, having a human touch, and the one should be equal to another. And it's obvious that in this field, What's also important is uh, transportation infrastructure, which will enable us to connect uh, um, uh, urbanistic elements and people. People need to move around. You have implemented the um, World Cup projects and many other projects, but we have to remember that this is the project which is aimed not only at the future of the city of Moscow, but at improving living conditions of uh, many people who are living in different districts and uh, regions of Moscow. As for the renovation project as such and resettlement pr uh, project, it's also a great uh, project which will improve quality of lives of many people, not even to mention its economic component, which we all think about. And uh, drawing a parallel with the Crater Paris, there is an opportunity to build tens of thousands of new jobs. The importance of these projects is great. And once again, I would like to emphasize that I am an eyewitness of some incredible changes that I've seen through 2011 to 2018. And today, the teams which have been working in the project of uh, Greater Paris, I'll be frank with you, are being inspired by the Greater Moscow project. We had a conversation about Greater Paris and about the lessons from Moscow. Let's ask a question to, to the oldest city of the world, Cairo. However strange it may seem, but uh, today in Cairo we can, we can see the very bold vision of building something totally new. Let's ask Almani Salman about the new administrative capital. Ayman Salman, new administrative capital of Egypt. Uh, what Moscow can learn, but perhaps already what Cairo can now gain from Moscow. 
Um, thank you um, very much, and, and I'm really honored to be among this distinguished um, panel. Um, just to provide some uh, context, you know, to what I will be sharing. Um, you know, this is actually my visit to Moscow after 12 years of absence. You know, so I used to come to Moscow frequently. Then I stopped coming for 12 years, and I just came, you know, like a few days ago. And you know, I really can't say anything before I congratulate all the people. In, in Russia and in Moscow for the amazing transformation they have done for the city um, from everywhere. And you know, when I think we'll probably hear more on the learning stage. Yes, probably, you know, yes, I come from Cairo, which is the oldest uh, city in the world, whether it's in terms of architecture, starting from Memphis, uh, where the pharaohs started, but not only this, but actually the first government setup for a city in the world was in Memphis. But actually today, I think we all here to learn from Moscow. And I think we all here to learn from the major achievement and then transformation that you guys have done. And if I have learned anything, or if I'm impressed by anything, I'm really impressed by the clarity of the vision. I mean, what we have seen today from um, you know, what was presented by the mayor and what was presented by Murat right now is a very, very, very clear vision. A vision that actually, you know, not only a vision and lots of talk, but actually it's a vision with perseverance to make it happen. And, and believe me, there's not a lot of people would know how hard it is to transform a historical city. When you have a city that has a lot of history and a lot of um, system that used to run it, that actually makes it extremely difficult to make those changes. And I fully appreciate that, you know, coming from where I come from. But, you know, for me, this vision that actually put people in the center of it, and you don't see that a lot. I mean, actually, it was so obvious from, you know, everything that we've heard today that people are in the center of this vision. But not only, you know, the aspect of you know, interacting with them, but also dealing with some of the key challenges. I mean, for me, for example, one of the huge differences that I have seen coming to Moscow after 12 years is how, you know, Russia and Moscow is becoming open to foreigners. Um, it was not like that. It was actually totally different. And, and, you know, and you could see that this is continuing. And, and, you know, the many things that you're doing, including, for example, that, you know, you learn that many of the people that are helping us during out this, throughout this, uh, you know, conferences is volunteers. This is the new generation that learning how to interact with foreigners, and that's actually an amazing achievement. That that actually will take that much further. Not only this, but I think you know we've also seen today the competitiveness spirit in its good way. I mean, we're now seeing somebody want to put Moscow on top of the world, you know, competing with, with New York and all the major cities. And I think actually you have headways and I think you'll, you'll probably achieve that. The other thing that really was um, impressive for me that I think, you know, the World Cup and its impact on the city. I think um, we all know that and I think, you know, Murat would know that more than us. That basically deadline in Moscow is something that's actually very, very useful because it gets you to get things done on the final moment. Like we were told today that, you know, this is, they're just finishing this place like yesterday. And that actually such a huge boost to achieve, you know, the vision and to, to, to create, you know, what we have seen. And yes, France won the World Cup and I think we've all congratulated France, you know, many times. And, and congratulations again. But for me, the real winner out of this World Cup is actually Russia. I think Russia won big. They did not only won the tournament or take the cup home, they actually won something for me much bigger. They won you know, the heart of millions of fans that came to experience Moscow and came to experience the many cities around Russia and went out there to be ambassadors for Russia. So Marat, you know. So, you know, fasten your seat belt. I think you'll be getting a lot of visitors from now on, you know. Uh, I think actually everybody came, had an, an amazing experience. Um, you know, of, of you know, how you've welcomed people and you've actually interacted with them in, in a very positive way. Transportation for me is impressive. I actually had, you know, a tour to watch 
the most, and, and, and guys, if any of you have not done that, highly recommended, go around and watch the underground. It's a museum by itself. And you know, your ability to expand it and keep that kind of culture is commendable. So thank you for, for actually giving us that welcome and, and giving us you know, the chance to enjoy that experience. Let's turn, if we could, to uh, Mohamed Mizgani, if possible. So uh, we're going to talk about several things here. And, and, and if we split the many, the, the discussion so far, one of the aspects is this nexus, transport and development. Uh, it isn't just about how well the trains run, it's also about where the people are uh, and where the jobs are to put them. Um, how, how, what's your assessment um, on the, um, uh, in terms of how Moscow is approaching its development, its transport infrastructure, and ultimately the modal split uh, 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 for transport within and between the city? Okay, thank you very much and thank you for the invitation. So I represent here the International Association of Public Transport, which is a, an organization with 1,500 members in 96 countries. Of course, it's, uh, my first visit in Moscow was in 1989. And then uh, during the 90s, I started coming to Moscow for uh, business trips especially with the, uh, with the uh, city of Moscow and, uh, and with the transport department. I remember my, one of my first visits was for the consulting assignment on public transport, and one of our recommendations at that time was to, it was in 92, 93, was to dedicate one bus, one, one lane in the road for public transport. And they said at that time, oh, we don't need to dedicate any lane. You see, we don't have cars. So they have the space they want. Public transport has the space they want. So no need to do that. And you, we followed this, uh, this evolution, and now it's only in, 90, uh, in 2010, 11, that, that this uh, movement and this vision, as it was said already, was clearly stated and clearly implemented. And, uh, and uh, what is remarkable, actually, is the, um, the uh, uh, the priority given to public transport, it was highlighted by the deputy mayor, uh, it's the, uh, the, the size of the transport projects that were implemented. So this uh, uh, metro circle uh, uh, line, the diameter, uh, uh, me diameter line that is now being, uh, being implemented. Uh, so the scale, the time needed to implement, which is very relatively very short, short time, the diversity of projects, because there, were, there are infrastructural projects, but also upgrade and modernization of the fleet, of the rolling stock, of the surface transport too. We should not forget that. It's not only about metro, it's also about tramways and buses. It's also the traffic management and the control of parking, uh, uh, which makes uh, more challenging uh, for, for, for car drivers and then which will make them use more public, public transport. And then it's the integration of all these modes together, not only integration of modes together, but also integration of transport and urban planning. And, and this is very important, is that first we should try to shorten distances. We should try by mixing activities that people, they don't have to travel long distances because they can, they can find in their environment all what they, they need. Uh, and, 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 and then if they travel, then we should try to uh, make them travel in, 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 in sustainable modes, public transport, Walking, we should not uh, we should not forget, and uh, and there is a full program in Moscow to re to 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 upgrade walkways, to make the accessibility to stations uh, easier, etc., etc., for pedestrians. So this is this is important. There is a bike sharing system also in Moscow, car sharing system, and what is unique or almost unique is that there is only one authority covering all these modes. If you look to different cities in the world, there is one. Taxis, they depend from the Ministry of Interior, for example. Then buses and metro, they, 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 they are related to the municipality. And uh, suburban trains are the, region, uh, the regional level. In Moscow, everything is under the same authority. There are only very few cities in the world. that uh, It's London, Dubai, Moscow, uh, Seoul, and Singapore. 
okay? Uh, cities of a certain size. So this is important to, to, uh, to, to highlight. Uh, of course, there is now with uh, Qatar and the, uh, the, the development of the metro system in Doha, etc. It's also kind of uh, integrated approach, but this is, uh, this is very important. And it was mentioned by the deputy mayor, 70% of, uh, of the market share, uh, uh, of the mobility market share is for, for uh, uh, public transport. And, and what is important there is, is the continuity, is having a vision, but also the continuity of that vision. This is very important. Unfortunately, in some cities we have, uh, when there is a new party ruling uh, city, then the new mayor will change completely and we restart from scratch. And, and, and in, in Moscow there is a continuity, uh, and this is very important because if we, if we want to put the, the human in the center, we need also uh, to have to have this uh, this continuity, uh, and there is a political courage. You know, when you take a decision to restrict car traffic, to restrict parki parking, you have to have political courage to do it. And so the mayor of Moscow, they he he, he took the risk because also the people could, could could be against it. But at the end, it was why they accepted it because there are alternatives, because there are a good metro system, because there are a good bus system, tramways, etc., etc. So this is important that it's a kind of. Uh, carrot and stick uh, uh, policy that, okay, uh, we, 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 we take something, but we give uh, an alternative uh, in exchange of that. Thank you. Thank you. And let's, let me immediately turn to Beirut, if we could. To, uh, Jamal Itani, mayor of Beirut. Uh, you you are, have a huge program undergoing with World Bank on transport. It's, it's, a, it's about all these things. It's surface and it's roads and everything. How do you make these difficult trade-offs and decisions? Give us, the, give us an example of Beirut. Well, frankly, uh, you, you, can't, you can't just take one solution and build on it. It has to be a, a, an overall solution for the transportation system in the country. Beirut is much smaller than Moscow. It's only 22 square kilometers, and the population is approximately 500,000 uh, inhabitants. But uh, <clears throat> we have approximately more than 600,000 vehicles drive into Beirut every morning. They work there, eat there, entertain there, and then leave back out, out of Beirut every day. So we had, this is the main difficulty that we're facing in Beirut. So to, to solve the issue in Beirut, it, we have to have a, a, an a master plan for the transportation. And as Mr. Mohammed here mentioned, this master plan, he, include, he mentioned most of the uh, uh, you know, uh, criteria of this master plan. But uh, part of it is going to be uh, public transportation, uh, great separation at major intersections. We need to separate the levels of the streets to reduce the number of traffic signals, uh, synchronizing, <coughs> synchronizing the traffic signals, uh, parking facilities, building parking facilities, and encourage people to use bicycles, uh, which we are also doing, and then educating the public and law enforcement are so crucial. <coughs> now, back to the World Bank uh, project. Um, since there are 600,000 vehicles coming into Beirut, so we decided that we provide public transportation for the people coming from outside Beirut and create parking facilities at the entrances of Beirut so that they will use this uh, facility. Uh, they're suggesting a BRT system, the bus rapid transit system. <clears throat> this will uh, uh, let the buses drive on a dedicated lane all the way to, inc to speed up the uh, you know, travel time and uh, reduce uh, the travel time to, for people to come to Beirut. But this will not be enough. Uh, more so, we, will also, we are also looking at introducing uh, elevated rail to support this uh, BRT system because it's not sufficient. But the, the issue we faced in Beirut as well is uh, we cannot let the BRT system go into Beirut roads and the, uh, the internal roads of Beirut. So we're going to support it in feeder buses that will collect people from the entrances of Beirut uh, to uh, drive into Beirut. Um, <clears throat> we can talk a lot about the transportation system, but we are at, at the end of the day, Beirut has lacked a transportation plan for a long time, but fortunately, maybe that uh, we're starting from scratch, so we can do anything we want. The only difficulty that we will face is uh, doing a metro in Beirut is going to be very difficult because of the ruins that are 
uh, buried in under Beirut uh, uh, city. Thank you very much. Yes. We all know that uh, Beirut can actually compete with Cairo as to which city is more ancient. Uh, let's talk about transport a bit more. I'd like to finish this subject. How about we go to serious construction experts? Let's turn to China. Uh, uh, I would like Mr. Zhao Tinghu of uh, the China Railway Construction Corporation. What do you think about uh, the Moscow program in terms of scale, in terms of vision and implementation? How do you assess what Mr. Husnulin presented to us? Uh, dear friends, good afternoon. It's a great honor for me to participate in this uh, distinguished forum. Uh, I uh, was able to visit World Cup games here in Moscow, and uh, we are very fortunate. Um, congratulations. Unfortunately, the Chinese team was not here, so hopefully China could uh, compete in the World Cup next time. This is my third time in Moscow, and I saw with my own eyes how Moscow's making progress. Uh, uh, in the morning, we'll listen to the Moscow mayor, and then we'll listen to a, a report by Mr. Husnulin. Moscow really changed in recent years. As far as the railway construction is concerned, the metro system, other things, I was really impressed with these developments. We know that things change quickly in China. We didn't expect Moscow to have the same. Moscow is also changing. And those changes are fast, and new venues are good quality. Uh, as uh, China's leading railway construction corporation, we were involved in all the major projects in China. We built over 80,000 roads around the world. This includes China, Singapore, Israel, Malaysia. We built underground roads over 3,000 kilometers of underground uh, railways. And we also did a lot of urban construction. We built uh, housing, residential uh, facilities. We've uh, accumulated a lot of experience, but we all agree that Moscow has a very good master plan, and the city is being transformed in a very positive way, and they focus on people. This is something we can learn from. You know, things uh, change very fast in China, but the issue of traffic jams has not been resolved entirely. For example, we have a lot of traffic jams in Beijing, so maybe we could learn from Moscow. Maybe there's something we can learn. It's important to build infrastructure. We should build transport hubs, uh, airports, stations, underground, overground, roads. This is all very important. This is our main priorities. Of course, we all know that uh, the Moscow metro system is very impressive. It's like a museum. 
we we saw how beautiful it is so it's important for us to learn from Moscow as far as uh, metro construction is concerned we have a project we want to build uh, the southwestern system of metro We use unique equipment building a metro in Moscow. We have the honor of uh, applying our experience in metro construction here in Moscow. We will work with the Moscow authorities on a number of projects. We can work together with our friends from Russia, from other countries, building uh, new venues in Moscow and help Moscow become the, the most beautiful city in the world. Thank you. We, we want to... We need architects and designers to help us. So I'd like to turn to Thady Jabri now. Uh, you know, apart from all the congratulations and all the positive things that previous speakers have mentioned, could you please tell us what's the next greatest challenge for your profession and for all of us, for Moscow? For example, we are here at uh, Zaryadye Park, and everybody agrees that it's a wonderful project today. But what about tomorrow? Thank you very much. It's a great honor for me to address you. I have a feeling that Moscow is getting younger year in, year out. We often come to Moscow ever since we joined uh, the Moscow Development Competition about six years ago, and every year we see new projects, large-scale projects. I was personally impressed with the way Moscow got rid of illegal kiosks and created wonderful pedestrian areas. Uh, the Moscow Central Circle Road embankments in Moscow and finally, the Zaryadye Park we are currently at. Thank you very much for all your labor. Moscow has over 15,000 hectares of industrial zones, and the city is now facing this great challenge of replacing dilapidated housing. Moscow is now using comprehensive approach and improved the quality of its development project, its multifunctional projects integrated with transport and public spaces. I would like to show you an example of a large-scale transport-oriented project currently being implemented together with the city authorities, and it's hugely successful. It's a project in northern Moscow. It's Botanichesky Sad station let let me play a short video now lower the volume a little bit we all know that MCC is now used for passenger transportation and it combines different kind of transport integrate it's integrated natural you have nice underground uh, facilities full of light with a clear navigation system it was important for us to integrate these underground facilities with buildings so people can get to the building they need without going outside this will make moving around the city more convenient and those facilities those areas must be full of light nice for people to meet in you can cover squares with the tent that's the symbol of this project and there is also a hotel adjacent to it it has a lot of uh, greenery uh, l landscaping is done in such a way that you can have the vents in front of this venue and it's also connected uh, with the an existing metro station and this project is surrounded with this wonderful botanical garden 
This project is currently being implemented, and there is another Chinese project being developed nearby. So in a few years, we'll see this project developing. Uh, the emphasis, of course, is on the plants. Green revolution continues around the world. Eco sustainability, smart city. These expressions are used by 21st century architects all the time. Uh, countries update their uh, environmental rankings. In Japan, there is a system called CASPI. Uh, there is STDOM system bring in uh, the UK. Moscow is also taking its first steps in the same area. This will require a lot of legislative efforts and new environmental technology, which will help Moscow become an excellent and smart city. Thank you. Uh, we have only one thing left. Can you just imagine uh, what I have in my hands? Like last yesterday we saw it on TV. I have a football in my hands, and we have to pass this football to someone. Last night we saw politicians giving this football to one another, but actually the real football is something we should give to Qatar, right? And we have the Minister of Municipality and Environment of Qatar here, Mohammed bin Abdullah al Rumaihi. Well, you just saw the scale uh, with which infrastructure is being developed. And this is just one host city in Russia. And uh, you are going to. You know, your country is rather small, and you are going to perform the same kind of miracle with a large number of stadiums. How are you going to accomplish this? And have you learned any useful lessons here today for your plans for 2022? We're challenging, actually, but uh, we have done uh, very good homework. And uh, the learning from Russia is a great learning, really. Let me start by uh, congratulating our friends from Russia for their successful organization, very successful organizations of the championship. And uh, the World Cup is uh, really the top of the top in everywhere organization for the football or sport uh, uh, competitions. Uh, the state of Qatar, as you know, has invested a lot in early into this uh, future of uh, development of the state of Qatar as a Qatar vision 2030, but now we are creating a comprehensive approach how to join all the projects together and how really to be able to organize a World Cup in a good way, but to continue our way ahead using everything that we will do to uh, uh, go to our target 2030. Uh, so uh, we start very early. We finish our new airport, our new port, uh, five cities uh, inside the cities, let's say, urban developments, al Wusail, 37 square kilometers, uh, two square kilometers, uh, the Pearl Island, Musharib is one square kilometers in downtown, and al Wa'ab is one square kilometers out of the downtown, plus all the uh, Olympic city, let's say, where we are going to host the visitors from everywhere to join the World Cup. So uh, Qatar and, and Doha, especially as a city in the development scale, is on the top uh, level in the world. And uh, uh, because we, we have organized ourselves in such a way that to uh, face the challenges very early, uh, our populations, uh, became four times in 10 years, 2006, 2016, from 800,000 to mostly now 3 million uh, populations between the Qatari nationals and all our friends, the inhabitant of Qatar. Uh, uh, plus the Doha city has developed four times as well. So we became fast in 10 years, we became to the boundaries of the great Doha. 
Now receiving the World Cup, for sure, there will be eight stadiums, but all around the city, so it's easier not to have heavy transportations from one city to another, but it's only 20 minutes by bus, and you will be in the next stadium. So that is, that is one of the ways that you shorten the logistics, shorten the transportation. But at the same time, we created two metro lines with 44 stations in four years. There was in Qatar working 22 drillers on the underground to do this in four years. So it was really a fast track operations. And all our metros, they are ready now and they are under commissioning. So 2019, the two lines will be working 100% and joining all the stadiums to the Olympic cities where the, will be the accommodations and to the fan zones to the center of the Doha and other cent cultural centers where the people might be and they might need, need the transportation. Plus a plan to put together about 4,000 buses to help uh, transportation from every, every corner of the uh, countries. And the distance between the stadiums, it will not go beyond the 22 kilometers. So that is mostly our uh, plan to shorten, but also the orbitals will be joining. We have done also as infrastructure about 500 kilometers of highways to join all space of the city and the country, especially for the fan zones or the fan accommodations going to be outside the city. Uh, again, Qatar is going to be really uh, on a knowledge-based economy because we are now phasing out from uh, the energy, oil and gas economy into a uh, knowledge-based economy. So we are emphasizing on investment on capital, human capital especially, and going away from here to education. So we have a lot of education cities, cultural centers, and uh, especially the infrastructures in Qatar, especially the undergrounds, but also sewage, water, electricity, telephone, has been developed and changed recently by investing about $66 billion in between 2015-2022. And that is the second phase of our Qatar vision. So that's very important to see how we will go uh, from here uh, into developing uh, Doha in such a way that not, not going to be for sure, not Paris or uh, Moscow or even uh, the eldest city, Cairo, Beirut, but this is a modern city, this is a full investment, and this is our future. So we are trying to uh, trace a line and create a model, uh, if not in the world, at least in our region, in the Middle East, for a very uh, comprehensive approach city, very educated city, very rich in different uh, resources, and building up onto the human as well. So um, th this is very important, and uh, we will give it also a different entity, because people, when they come, they, they would like to see uh, an Arab city. We are going to receive the World Cup on behalf. This is the first Arab countries, the first Middle Eastern, the first Muslim countries going to receive this World Cup. So uh, it's a challenge, and it's a very much a pressure on, on us that, OK, we are representing, if we are representing if these all these, these uh, population in, in the very important region of the world, uh, I believe they will participate with us in the organization and they will help a lot. But as you know, uh, a such organization is also helped by the international community, international organizations, international uh, states, especially the FIFA, uh, World Cup uh, Committee. And uh, we, we are... Uh, for the, at least the insurance, we are planning very well, planning long time, executing very accurately with very accurate budget and a very course, uh, comprehensive approach to our uh, future in Qatar. So I hope that everybody here will join us and come to Doha to visit this great World Cup. Finally, we are running out of time. If I may, I would like to say a couple of words myself. You know, today we touched on uh, the subject of how important people are. And, you know, we are so fortunate. Some people had certain doubts about the World Cup in Russia. Other people did not have any doubts, but uh, everybody was really impressed. 
with this genuine happiness. It was a great festival for people. You know, if you make people the center of everything you do, if you build infrastructure, you build one thing, another thing, a third thing, what people really care about, they don't need that much to be happy, to have a real festival. I think that we all, Russia and the whole world, we were really impressed and surprised with how wonderful, what a wonderful thing and how wonderful it all worked. So I just wish that whatever we do, we may be ministers or construction experts or economists, designers, whatever, you name it. I just hope that we all would always keep this in mind, you know, this vision of people who are happy, people who are happy to be together, happy to be at this event, happy to be at this wonderful, uh, in this wonderful city of Moscow. I just want this picture to stay with us forever and it will help us in our future lives and our work. Thank you very much to all our panelists and Mr. Kosnulin would like to say a few words. If I may, I would like to respond and uh, offer my vision in response to what I heard here. Of all the speakers here, once again, I would like to emphasize clearly that we all say that people should be at the center. Human capital should be our top priority. And our colleague from Cairo, uh, uh, Aliman Soliman, he said that Moscow is an open city. Yes, we are an open city. We are really very open. That's what we want. We want to be a global competitive city. And then my friend Maurice Leroy, uh, like I said, we are close friends. It's because of him, because of Greater Paris. We have a large delegation here from France. We have people here. We uh, got so close over the last seven years working together, being open to one another, having this kind of dialogue together. We have learned a lot from the French. Well, I can tell you, here in this room I have my uh, friend Gérard Mestrelet. He created the world's biggest uh, utility company. And even though he's a very busy person, he is here at the Moscow Urban Forum. Uh, we also have uh, Mr. Etienne here. Uh, they have an organization of 800,000. He's here representing the French Chamber of Commerce. We have many people here from France who are real friends to us. And also, another thing, uh, something that uh, Mohamed Mezgani said, uh, Secretary General of the International Association of Public Transport. I really agree with what he said. One of our biggest achievements is that we were able to centralize and synchronize uh, all the government agencies. We have a very effective chain of command. We have the mayor at the top, then deputy mayors have uh, freedom, they need to operate, they have all the necessary resources. When people ask us, what's your secret? Why are you able to operate in such an effective way? We tell them, number one, we have the right kind of person as mayor. He allows us, his deputies, to work properly. He uh, allows people to help us implement our plans. When people ask us why we build so fast, our secret is very simple. We work around the clock. We work 24-7 on all of our transport uh, construction sites. We talk to people, we tell them, uh, you can have this construction project going on for five years. If you let us work at night, we'll get it done in three years. So people say, okay, let's get it done in three years. We agree. Keep working during the night. That's fine. So. This centralization is a big achievement for us. And then Mr. Mizgani said about uh, uh, special lanes for public transport. 20 years ago, you came up with this proposal. Now we have 270 bus lanes, seven, 270 kilometers of bus lanes in Moscow. When we build new roads, we always have public transportation in mind. Um, 
from Jamal Itanis. I haven't been to, to Beirut for 20 years, but my friends have been there. They've been totally, uh, totally, you know, excited. It's so clean. It's so friendly. Uh, it's so open. They said, we are going to go to Beirut from now on on regular. I think it's the married to the mayor of the city, and I, I'm wishing you to implement all these transportation plans. I know it's a historic city, and I know how difficult it may be in a historic city with all the limitations to uh, realize transportation strategy, wishing you every success and hoping that you will succeed. When we had made a decision to build uh, transportation infrastructure, we didn't have um, neither enough strength nor enough designers. We decided to invite the people from the world over. This is how CRCC company began to work with us. It's the third company by the volume of construction. We have invited them to help us build Metro. I will be very open. I always say to our colleagues, we have to learn from our Chinese colleagues. The way they build, they build very fast. The way they're making decisions, you are an example for us. This is why we've invited you and we want to even overtake you in a way to do better than you. And today we have a very good job going on and hopefully all the plans uh, you and I about the metro will implement. We are learning from you. Speaking about inter interchange hub, Fadi Jabri, please, uh, please note it that um, in Russia he even learned his Russian language, not only to live in, in Russia. It's one of the biggest design in Nikkei CK company of the world. We went to Japan to study their experience when we saw these uh, interchange hubs that they've been doing in Japan. And of course, we've taken their experience as the basis. It was not easy uh, to apply Japanese and Chinese experience in Russia. Uh, even my colleagues were resisting. They were saying, why do we need all these foreigners? Why do we need some some other colleagues, it's our business, we can do it ourselves. No, we cannot. Unless we will be open, uh, we will not be on the cutting edge. Yes, we can do something on our, you know, our own level, but you will never become the top notch. You'll never become one of the best. So we are open to work with everyone. And I'm very happy for um, that all of you have made it, um, you know, time and chance, opportunity to come and join us here. I'm wishing uh, success to my colleague uh, Hamin Abdullah Al Ruhamaini, Ministry of the Municipality and Environment uh, of Qatar, because they're taking a huge responsibility in doing this uh, soccer championship. Tomorrow we'll have a business meeting. All we know, all our experience, we will share it with you. And I think that for the Qatar, it will also be the great leap forward. We've seen it here in Moscow, and uh, we're wishing you every success. And I want to thank all of you, ladies and gentlemen, who have uh, come to this event, to this forum. I can see in our audience many faces uh, that I've known. Um, Aisha, uh, who is uh, Smart City, the supervisor of Smart City in Dubai. She's a great speaker, by the way. And she has also been with us uh, today at our forum. Uh, at this uh, session, I can see many of our developers and builders who are making these big projects a reality because everything you can see in the city today, it's a work of a huge number of people, of developers, of builders, construction companies. We have 800,000 of builders working only at the, at the public contract. We have 200,000 people working and we're trying to manage all of that and to coordinate it to make a conditions for people to work successfully. It's not an easy uh, challenge. Of course, today we can see these nice things. It looks like we are succeeding and plowing ahead. But what's behind this success is a colossal work and effort of the huge amounts of people. And only by combining our energy, we are capable of achieving that. So I am very grateful that you have found time, dear guests and dear investors, contractors, my colleagues. Uh, from the uh, most inch uh, project uh, company which has built this building we're in today and they've built Luzhniki Stadium they're building the metro lines they're all here today and um, they are doing this great and grand work thanks to uh, Moscow residents for being so patient with us and taking part in Stepano I would like to say to you also 
thanks to your family, because your family has been moderating many of our forums, and your brothers has been moderating also many of our events, and um, it's a pleasure to work with you. Once again, thanks to all of you. Uh, I hope that you will have find your stay in Moscow enjoyable.